Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Constants of Proportionality. This is part one. So in the last lesson, we have taken raw data, much like these xy points that we have here, which actually I've taken directly from the last lesson. And what we did is we plotted those points, and you can see the results from the last lesson right here. And what we did is we investigated in the last lesson what makes a set of points uh, what makes them form what we call a proportional relationship. And what we figured out is that if we take the y uh, 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 coordinate and divide it by the x coordinate, then if we get the same answer, uh, in other words, when we take the ratio of the x, the y to the x coordinate, if we get the same answer for every pair there, then we know that it forms a proportional relationship. And also, when it forms a proportional relationship, you can see that it forms a straight line, and that line also intersects the origin. Here it intersects 0, 0. Here's another example down here where the points formed a straight line, and it intersects the origin. Now, just to refresh our memory before we continue on with the idea of this lesson, let's take a look at the points that form this line right here. Notice we have 2, 6, 4, 12, and 6 eighteenths. 2 6 is here, 4 twelfths is here, and 6 uh, and 18 is there. All right. So what we figured out is this: these form a uh, obviously a straight line. There's no kinks or anything. And if you extend that line, it also intersects the origin at 0, 0. Now notice 0, 0 is not a point on our list of points here. But still, if you were to extend uh, th uh, those three points and kind of see where they end up, they will intersect there at the origin, right? Now let's take a closer look at what happens if I take the y coordinate and I divide it by the x coordinate. So y divided by x, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 12 divided by 4 is also 3. 18 divided by 6 is also 3. So in the last lesson we said, if you have points and you can take the y and divide it by the x and get, it, get the answer, and do that for every xy pair, and if we get the same answer, you know, and, and, and if those points intersect the origin like that, we call that a proportional relationship, right? Let's take a look at the uh, other example here. We have 4 comma 1, 8 comma 2, 12 comma 3, 16 comma 4. Take a look at y divided by x. So 1 divided by 4, that's 1 fourth. 2 divided by 8, if you simplify that, that's also 1 fourth. 3 divided by 12, if you simplify 3 twelfths, that's again 1 fourth. 4 divided by 16, if you simplify that, that's again 1 fourth. So when we divide like this, we get the same number, 1 fourth. And when we plot these points, and indeed they do form a line, and that line, if you were to extend it, does intersect the origin at 0, 0. So we say that these points also form a proportional relationship. Now the new concept in this lesson is we're going to take, take down the graphs and we're going to stop using the graph so much. We want to look at a pair of points and figure out what's called the constant of proportionality. If I just ask you, what do you think the concept of uh, the, con the constant of proportionality is, you might guess that it's some sort of number that relates the coordinates to each other. So when we take 6 divided by 2 and get 3, and 12 divided by 4 and get 3, and 18 divided by 6 and get 3, we say that the constant of proportionality is 3. It is the number that is constant. That's kind of like, even though all of these numbers are all different here, we still have a constant that is common to each pair of xy coordinates, right? And that number in that case is 3. Because even though it doesn't appear that there's a relationship here, we know that there is, because when we divide those numbers, it always comes out to the same thing. That means the ratio of, of, of y to x for every pair of these guys is the same, and that's called a constant of proportionality, right? Let's take a look down here. When we divide these, we always get 1 fourth. Uh, all of these numbers look totally different. It looks like there's no relationship, but when we divide, we always get 1 fourth, so the constant of proportionality is 1 fourth. All right, now the last thing I'm going to say to bring it home before we solve the problems that we have in our lesson is that this constant of proportionality for points on a line like this, when uh, the line intersects the origin, it also has another meaning. So the constant of proportionality is also something that we call the slope of a line. Let me ask you something. Take a look at this line and look at how that looks, how steeply, how steep that looks. And take a look at this line and notice that this one is not quite as steep. Which one would you say? is the, has the higher slope. When you think of slope, right, this is flat. There's no slope at all. But if I'm going up a mountain, it's a very steep slope, a high slope. So taking a look at this line compared to this one, which one has the higher slope? Well, this one has the higher slope because it's going up very fast compared to how far it's going up, we, or going over. We say 
it rises a very large amount uh, compared to how far it moves over you know, to, the, to the right there. Right? So it has a very high rise compared to its run. So this is a very high slope, but this line right here is a very low slope. So we said the constant of proportionality for this one was three, and we have a symbol for the slope, which is the constant of proportionality. We call it m, and m in this case is equal to three. We just calculated it. Six divided by two is three. Twelve divided by four is three, and so on. They all give us three. So we say that m is the slope. We use the letter m for historical reasons, or I guess you could call it s for slope, but we always use m for slope. The idea of the constant of proportionality being three is exactly the same thing for, for this kind of graph as the slope of the line is also being three. So we say m is equal to three. And we go down here and we say, well, the slope of this guy is one-fourth. And how do we get one-fourth? Well, when we divide y divided by x, for every single pair of these numbers, we get the same thing. So we say the constant of proportionality is one-fourth. And because it's the same thing as the slope, the slope is also one-fourth. Now, which of these numbers is bigger? Is three bigger than one-fourth? Of course it is. Three is the larger constant of proportionality. Three is the larger slope. So basically what you can do is if I never drew any of these graphs and I told you, hey, here's a line with a slope of three, right? And here's a line with a slope of one-fourth. Then you know that three is bigger, so you know that that line will be steeper. It has a higher slope. So this one has a higher slope than this one. And so when you graph it, you expect this guy to go up like a rocket more because it has a steeper slope, a higher slope. And you expect this one to be closer to horizontal because it's a very, very shallow or a small slope. If you get down all the way to a slope of zero, then there, there is no, there's no up to it at all and it's totally flat. So you can think of driving across a very flat desert or something like that, or a very flat plain, that's a slope of zero. Going up a mountain means you have higher and higher and higher slope. So before we take this down, these down and solve our problems, let's just recap from the top because it's a very important concept. When we have xy points like this, right, if they form a line, and if that line intersects the origin like that, then we can calculate what's called the constant of proportionality. We just take the y coordinate divided by the x. We should get the same answer for every pair of divisions that we do. In that case, the answer was three. We have another word for the constant of proportionality. We call it the slope, and the letter that we use to, to write down the slope is called m. That's for historical reasons, but m is always slope, which is the same as constant of proportionality. The larger the slope, then the steeper the line is, and the smaller the slope, the closer it gets to zero, the more flat and horizontal the line becomes. So you can calculate slope by dividing numbers in coordinates, in, in coordinate pairs. I like to take these down, but I want you to remember in your mind what these look like because we're gonna write down some new coordinates, calculate the constant of proportionality, which is the same as the slope, and that'll help us determine what these future, uh, what these future uh, pairs of points look like even without graphing them. All right, let's take a look at our first problem. Let me give you some xy coordinates uh, of some points that are going to form a line. So I can put a little, make a little table here. Let's say I give you 2 comma 6, and then I give you 3 comma 9, and then I give you 4 comma 12. Now we know we can graph this, but we don't want to graph it here. We want to try to understand what's happening without actually graphing it here. So what we want to do is I'm going to tell you ahead of time that these uh, xy points here, if we were to plot them, they would form a straight line and they would also intersect the origin if we were to extend that line into the origin. So we now know, since we just talked about it, that to calculate the constant of proportionality, what we need to do is basically do a division, a ratio of y divided by x. So we're going to make a new column, y divided by x, all right? And we're going to call that m. And so when we take y divided by x, it'll be 6 divided by 2. And what is 6 divided by 2? It's 3. And then for the next one, we'll say that the slope is y divided by x, which is 9 divided by 3. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. And for the last point, we're going to say that the slope, m, or the constant of proportionality, is 12 divided by 4. It's always y divided by x. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. So if I asked you, what is the constant of proportionality for, uh, uh, for, this, for this line, for these points that would form a line, you would say constant of proportionality 
you would say m is equal to three. And what you have figured out here is that because you get the same exact number when you divide these, uh, the y to the x and the y divided by the x and the y divided by the x, and you get the same number, then you know that this must form a line and it also must intersect the origin. And because it forms a line, there's a relationship between all of the xy pairs. And the relationship is when you divide them like this, you get the same thing. What this is basically telling you, this constant of proportionality, is it's telling you that the y coordinate is always three times larger than the x coordinate. Whatever you put in for x, y is going to be three times bigger than that. Whatever you put in for x, y is three times bigger than that. Whatever you put in for x, y is three times bigger than that. Four times three is 12, three times three is nine, two times three is six. That is why it forms a line. Because if you think about it, for a line to form, whenever you pick one point on the line to get to any other point, you have to go over and then up. And then to get to the next point, you also have to go over and up, and then over and up. Because we know that every relationship here is the same constant of proportionality, then when we go over and up, we're going the same amount each time. And so that means that all the points you get are going to form a line. Now, the other thing that we want to bring home here is we know that the slope is equal to 3. Now, what does slope equal to three mean? It, it just means, again, that the y values are three times larger than the x values. And we just saw a picture of what the slope of three looks like. It's something like this, all right? Now, if you had a slope of five or six or seven, something bigger, it would be even more steep, right? And if you had a slope that went down, you know, two, one, zero, one quarter, it would get flat, flat, flat. So the lower the slope, the closer to zero, uh, you get a totally flat line when you have a slope of zero, and the larger the slope, the higher the slope, the steeper that line becomes. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. And let me get, again give you these coordinate pairs, these xy pairs. All right, so we're going to have 4, 2, we're going to have 8, 4, we're going to have 14, 7. So we could plot these points, but I'm telling you ahead of time that this is all chosen so that if you were to plot these, they form a straight line just like we showed you, and that straight line, if you were to extend it, would intersect 0, 0. So the slope, or the constant of proportionality, is the y value divided by the x value, the ratio of each of these coordinates here. So here, y divided by x is 2 divided by 4. However, you know that if you simplify this fraction by dividing by 2, you're going to get 1 half. Now, what is this one? y divided by x, again, is 4 divided by 8. But if you simplify this fraction, you're also going to get 1 half. And this one is going to be 7 divided by 14. This divided by this. Again, divide by 7 on both, both top and bottom. Again, you're going to get 1 half. So you've proven to yourself that this must form a line because when you divide the numbers like this, it has the same constant of proportionality. And I kind of told you ahead of time these problems were set up that way. What is that constant proportionality? We call it m is equal to one half. So you could say the constant of proportionality is equal to one half. You could also say the slope of this line is also equal to one half. Now let me ask you a question. Here, without even drawing anything, the slope of this line is three. And without drawing anything, the slope of this line is one half. Which of these lines is steeper? Right? Well, the one with the slope of three. The higher the slope, the steeper the line. The closer the slope goes down to zero, the flatter the line. So this is a very shallow line, and that other one is a steep line. All right, let's take a look at problem number three. Let me give you some points. There's x and y. And let me give you a couple points here. 2 comma 10. Here is 4 comma 20. Here is 6 comma 30. And we are going to say that the constant of proportionality here uh, is going to be what we call m, and it's just y over x. So for the first uh, point here, 10 divided by 2. 10 over 2. What is 10 divided by 2? It's just 5. Here, the slope here, or the constant of proportionality, is 20 divided by 4. And 20 divided by 4, again, is 5. Here, we have constant of proportionality, 30 divided by 6, which again is 5. So again, because you got the same constant of proportionality between the pairs of points, then you know it must form a line and that line must go through the origin. The reason I keep telling you the line must go through the origin is because later on we're going to talk about lines that don't cut through the origin. 
right? So we're taking kind of a special case of lines that are, they form a line and they also go through the origin. And for those lines, there's always a constant of proportionality uh, here. You get exactly the same number, which is a five. Now we figured out that that, you know, that answer M is equal to five. So the constant of proportionality is equal to five. We could also say, because there's the same concept, the slope of this line is also five. Now again, which one is steeper? The slope of a line that is a five or the slope of a line that is one half or the slope of a line in the other board, which was three. Well, five is the largest number, so it has the steepest slope. That means it's gonna be even steeper. It's gonna be even more vertical than the first one we had when the slope was three. Now, in, in physically, what does it mean to have a constant of proportionality or a slope equal to five? It just means that the y coordinate is five times bigger than the x. Two times five is 10. Four times five is 20. Six times five is 30. So it literally is a measure of how many times larger that y value is. And that's why it measures the slope. Because if the y term, if the y coordinate is five times larger than the x coordinate, it means that to go up to y, you must be going very far up for every little x value that you have. All right, we're gonna wrap it up with our last problem. Here is a table, x and y. And we're gonna say that the numbers are six comma four and 12 comma eight and 21 comma 14. And we're going to write down, we're going to write down the constant of proportionality also called the slope y divided by x. Y is four and X is six. Now this is a weird fraction, but you can divide by two, right? Four divided by two is two and six divided by two is three. So it reduces to two thirds. Here, Y divided by X is eight over 12. I can divide this both by four. Eight divided by four is two. 12 divided by four is three. It's the same number. This slope here is 14 and 21. 14 divided by 21, divide both by seven, 14 divided by seven is two, divided by seven you get three. So you see the same thing. I make a, a ratio and I find that I have a common ratio, which we call a constant of proportionality. M is equal to two thirds. So if you, I asked you, what is the constant of proportionality? You would tell me it is two thirds, but I also have taught you that that number is the same as the slope of the line. So if you, if you try to interpret what does this physically mean, it just means the y value is two thirds as large as the x value. So if you take this and multiply by two thirds, you get a slightly smaller number. If you take this and multiply by two thirds, you get the eight. If you take this divide by two, multiply by two thirds, I may have said divide earlier, sorry. If you multiply by two thirds, you'll get the 14 there. And if you had to rank them, you would see that two thirds is a little bit bigger than one half, so this is the smallest slope, the, the flattest line that we have, followed by this one, which is a little bit higher, and then followed by the slope of three, which is pretty steep, followed finally by the slope, which is five, which in our case is the steepest line we have. So the steeper and steeper and steeper your line gets, the larger and larger and larger the slope gets, the shallower and shallower that line gets, then the closer and closer that line looks like a flat line. Slope of zero is totally flat. Slope of approaching infinity is totally vertical. So big slopes equals big numbers, higher and higher uh, constants of proportionality. So I'd like you to go through these, take a look at the x, y coordinates that we've written down, calculate by dividing what the constant of proportionality is, and try to, in your mind, understand how that relates to the concept of slope. So I'd like you to practice these. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll wrap up this concept. And then after that, we're gonna actually tackle the more general concept of the slope of a line for any line that we can draw on a graph.